I want you to understand as the Bible talks about the uh, mystery Babylon and this great power at the end of the uh, end of the world, there's no doubt in my mind that as we look at the way condition of things right now, and if you were to look at any source online that tells you like a breakdown of the powers, the world powers, uh, you know, whether you're talking about in terms of, of money, in terms of just military, whatever, it's going to probably break it down like this. The United States, China, and Russia, okay, uh, is pretty much how it breaks down. Sometimes, depending on what they're talking about, uh, UK will be in there. Uh, but that's those are the world powers. And if you think about the trade between the United States and China alone, regardless of other Asian countries, uh, uh, you know, countries, that relationship there and the amount of trade and the amount of money that just is, is just transferred back and forth. And you begin reading the end time prophecy. Uh, I think, you know, we're seeing unfolding some, uh, some end times prophecy stuff. That's really not what the message is about, but I'm going to come back to that. The message tonight is the Asian influence on the United States. Asian influence on the United States. And just like we've talked about African influence, we've talked about uh, the, uh, uh, what do we talk about, Latin American influence, uh, you know, there's a lot of beautiful things that have been added to our culture and uh, the history. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about some things, so I don't want to go too far into it. But, you know, one thing that I'm not really going to mention tonight that is a huge contribution to our culture is Asian food. I mean, who, who doesn't like Chinese food and Asian food uh, of different sorts? And so that's what we're going to eat tonight. So uh, if you're smelling that and saying, hey, that's good, just wait a little bit longer. <laughs> All right. Also have some sampling of different things up here if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to check those out yet. Uh, I just want to, you know, just a reminder that what we're doing this month is just keeping before our minds just the different cultures of the world. And, and uh, when you start looking at the demographics, here's something I mentioned yesterday in Iola. <clears throat> you look at the, diff the, the, the demographics in terms of religion. Asia, of course, Asia is the biggest populated continent. Okay, the biggest bulk of the, I think it's like 40% of the world is in Asia or something like that. Just that one continent. All right. And it's mostly India and China, just biggest population. OK. And then you think about like Asia includes the Middle East. It includes parts of most of Russia. Uh, that's all considered Asia. So we're talking about a huge continent, a huge part of the world. And uh, and Israel's even in there. Now, Israel, what we, we hear so much about Israel in the news and everything. It's just a little blip. I mean, you can't even hardly see it on the map uh, when you start researching religion or whatever Jews. You know, the, the amount of Jews who are in Asia is like, it's like less than a percent. It's really small. Most Jews are in the United States. Okay. So, uh, but we're talking about all that region, the Middle East, you know, all the stands, you know, Pakistan, Kurdistan, uh, those are all, uh, you know, considered Asia. And uh, if you look at that part of the world, remember I said one third of the world, if you took the population and you just did it mathematically, one third of the world claims to be Christian, right? Well, when you're talking about Asia, which represents the biggest population of the world, it's only like 7% who claim to be Christians, okay? So the most of the, that world is, you know, uh, Hindu or obviously Islam is a, is a big uh, representation there. All right, now here's why I said all that. Now you take that demographic and you look at the, the Asian population in the United States and that number goes up to almost 20% Christians. The amount of Muslims goes way down and, and the Asians that are in the United States. And there's lots of factors for that, okay? But the point is that the Asians that we have opportunity to witness to here, you know, you knock on the door and you talk to somebody, they're going to be way more receptive. In fact, a lot of countries in Asia, you're not even allowed to preach the gospel. You'll go to jail, you'll get deported or something like that. You can't preach about Christ. But when they come here, they're open to it, right? They don't have the pressures of their culture saying, hey, we're going to put you in jail if you do that. So it's, it's a great people group to be able to reach with the gospel and, uh, and sit down and intellectually talk about that. Now, their worldview might be completely different than ours because Asian religion is a lot different than what we're used to. And so, uh, so that could be an obstacle, but uh, pay attention. But the, uh, uh, so anyway, so this is huge. We're talking about a huge people group, but in the United States, we, it's, you know, not that many in, in, the Asia, in Asia actually comes to the United States. 
but we have a great opportunity when, among those Asians to be able to preach the gospel. Okay, so we're going to talk about Asia, but we're talking about the influence, uh, Asian influence on the United States. And uh, uh, here's an interesting thing. Before I go into some of these th ways in which Asian uh, culture has influenced the United States, I want to talk about something that's called uh, I mean, a, a culture. How, how, what's the word? Acculturation. I think that's how you pronounce it. But here, let me explain. <laughs> All right. For instance, the United States influences Asia, right? And then Asia takes what we gave them, puts their own spin on it, and then they influence the United States. Now, this is really going to come out uh, on Sunday afternoon. I'm going to talk about a couple things. And anime will probably come up. What's anime? Well, it's cartoons. You've seen the drawing, like the animated uh, cartoon characters that they you know, they're Japanese. Well, that's influenced the United States. Technology, you know, we, you know, kind of had a lot of ideas and, and Japan came out with a lot of video games and different like inventions and China and all these places. And then it's like the United States and, and Asian uh, countries kind of work together and, and, and we kind of both influence each other, right? We got this shared culture at times. And so I'll just, the first one I'll mention, since I said, since I mentioned video games, the first one I'll mention is entertainment, okay? How has Asian culture influenced our entertainment? To me, one of the biggest things that jumped out in my mind was video games, all right? How many of y'all played Nintendo? Now, I'm kind of showing my age, right? But in the 90s, I mean, it was like Super Mario Brothers and all that stuff. Like, like the video games, you know, really got started real big in Japan. The, the computer graphics and stuff like that just came here in the United States, ate it up. And we just love the Japanese uh, uh, influenced video games and what have you. And some of the times we don't even realize it's Japanese. Now, here's what's the funny thing. I was in Japan from 85, 86, 87, I think it was, uh, as a kid, all right? Seven, eight, nine years old. I think I came back when I was 10, so I don't remember how that all worked out. But And so when I was in Japan, uh, the mainland Japan, later on we went back to Okinawa, so I've been over there twice. But when we were in the mainland Japan, I'm talking about Tokyo and all that, um, I remember just being exposed to the technology and the video games and all this stuff when I was really young. And when I came back to the United States, you know, like almost four years later, the United States was just getting on board with some of the things that I was exposed to in Japan, you know, before. In fact, this is kind of funny. Uh, this isn't technology, but remember Power Rangers? That's, I'm really dating myself now, but remember the Power Rangers? I remember watching the power, it was the Japanese version of it, Gobulu 5 or something like that. And it was, and I, I didn't understand a word they were saying because it was on Japanese TV and I couldn't explain it. But, but I was watching those exact characters. Now, somehow they dubbed it in the United States where there's, and then they put English uh, speaking actors in there and stuff like that. But the original footage was Japanese. And it was like, I don't know, man, like five years later or something like that where it came out in the United States. And I was like, I used to watch that when I was a kid. And a bunch of stuff, all the anime that got real big in the United States, I, I used to watch that. I had all their names memorized and stuff like that. I used to collect little cards and stuff like that. And so it's kind of interesting from my perspective how I saw that the, the cultural change. Uh, back in the day, the Sony Walkmans, all right, I'm aging myself again. <laughs> CD player, CD, uh, uh, whatever they're called, you know, back in the day, like Japan was very cutting edge on all that Sony, right? That's Japanese product. And so like my little experience with that in Japan and seeing the technology and all that and how it's influenced the United States has been pretty amazing. But let me talk about that for a second. So video games, what an amazing contribution to our culture, to the world, right? Video games. Well, let me explain to you. And I don't know how many of you guys have seen uh, a long time ago, Pastor Anderson made a video about Japan. And I hadn't been in Japan for so long that I was watching that thinking, please tell me that's not true. That Japan's in this current state right now and they have all these, uh, uh, I don't remember the name of it, it's like kamikaze something, uh, kamikaze culture. I can't remember what he, what he called it, but he was talking about Japan. And sure enough, if you read that, Japan had a, a crisis on their hands with all these young kids that were addicted to video games, addicted to technology and uh, devices and stuff like that. Okay, Contri contribution from Asia to the United States. What are we seeing right now in the United States? 
just addicted to video games, devices, and all and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's where Japan is. Okay, so Japan's ahead of us on technology. You know, they've come down a little bit from what I understand, but you know why part of that is? Because all the kids were addicted to video games. They didn't grow up with like their parents did with the education and the just just this desire to grow and to learn more things. And so they hit this crisis so much so that some of the government in in Japan was trying to ban like like uh, they were trying to put limits and kind of like the mask mandate you know what I mean? they, never, they, they couldn't really do anything if you didn't wear the mask but they the government mandated it right and everybody's saying hi who are you to tell me what i can same thing happened in japan they said okay parents you can't you need to let your kids play uh, they can't play in or they can't have any more than an hour a day online right that sounds pretty fair to me an hour a day that's that's plenty of time play your video games or whatever uh I know this in our house, we do a whole lot more than that sometimes, uh, spend online or on the devices or whatever. But I'm saying, if you think about it, an hour a day, that's, that's probably plenty. But Japan said, hey, we're gonna enforce this law and they voted on it and they, and they, and they accepted it. But then the people were out crying. I mean, there people were just rising up saying, who, that's not, you know, we need to be, have our freedoms and you can't tell our, you know, you can't tell parents how much time they can let the kids, even though there was nothing they could really do to enforce it. They were just saying, hey, we're going to put this mandate out there. Everybody was going crazy about that. So why was it, why did it get to that? Why would Japan say, hey, we need to, we need to make sure that our kids, you know, are off their devices. Well, I'll tell you why, because they're getting lazy, they're not contributing to the society, they're getting addicted, uh, they're falling into, you know, pornography, and they're falling into this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, actually, like, if you watch that video I was talking about, uh, there's, a, there's this weird where these kids are not, like, socializing at all, they just kind of, like, just stay in their basement or whatever, and they're, like, even, like, they're not actually going out there and dating, uh, you know, like, here's these grown men, right, living at home, and they're not going out there and dating women, but what they're doing is they're like having these fake dates online, like these video games that are like a pretend, uh, you know, pretend woman. And, uh, and it's weird. It's leading to a weird state. And look, the United States is right behind it. I mean, there's just, uh, you know, this whole on, online world. And the crisis, when they came out with this, uh, this ban, or, or whatever you want to call it, uh, this, these regulations that they enforced, um, it was right at the beginning of, at, at the beginning of like all the lockdowns and everything that with COVID, it was like March, 2020, right when that was happening. And so you, I can guarantee you that it's gotten worse since that with all the lockdowns and kids staying at home. And, and I bet you the amount of, of online time has been uh, insane. Okay. Let me read this article real quick. This is the J Japan times, March, 2020 from uh, Kagawa Kakamatsu. A local assembly has passed Japan's first ordinance aimed at reducing internet and video game addictions among young people by recommending the, that screen time be limited to one hour per day. The ordinance passed Wednesday by the, by the Kagawa uh, Prefectural Assembly has triggered controversy. The critics saying it is overly prescriptive for parents, despite it having no enforcement me mechanism. And by the way, I'm not saying government should have the right to enforce those kinds of things. I'm just telling you, it got to such a crisis there that they had to, they said, hey, we got to do something. And this is what they came up with. <clears throat> Taro Yamada, uh, a house, house of count, counselors, uh, members well-versed in the impact of the internet usage of freedom of speech, criticized the ordinance as nonsense, saying it is only tar it only targets usage time and does not account for how integrated and essential uh, digital devices have become in children's lives. The ordinance states that excessive internet usage and gaming leads children to become socially reclusive and to suffer sleep disorders, emphasizing the need of countermeasures enforced by uh, the prefectural government, schools, and guardians. The ordinance calls for guardians to establish rules with their children for smartphone usage and limit com computer and video game playing to 60 minutes per day on school days and 90 minutes per day on weekends and holidays. The, the, the bottom line is they realize, hey, this is a crisis we're having in our society where kids aren't growing, they're not learning, they're not getting educated, they're not contributing to our society. Why? Because our previous generation thought it was really cool when we designed all these video games and everything. And now in, the, you know, in all the different chat rooms and stuff that they were coming up with online, and now our generation's suffering from it. Well, I'm telling you, the United States is already there, really. But if you're going to look at how far behind we are in technology, 
what is to come, it's not going to get any better, right? As technology and the video games and all that stuff increases. Look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel 16. Verse 49. <clears throat> and so the, God's using Ezekiel here as his prophet, and he's telling him to go preach to uh, Israel, who is living in sin and all that. And it's saying that Sodom is Israel's sister. Okay, so verse 49 says this, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Now we know how Sodom ended up, right? We know the lifestyle that Sodom became known for. That was their main sin that God finally just said, I'm going to destroy this place for their wickedness. But what he's saying right here is that this, this is what led to Sodom being what Sodom was. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. And I'm telling you that any nation that is just living, you know, in wealth and, uh, and has, you know, no needs. Look, in the 80s when I was in Japan, the, my parents were like rich, okay? I mean, they were just in the military, just a regular military salary. But in Japan, at, during those days, the boom of the, of the tech, technology and, the, and all these kinds of things, uh, video games and all that, in Japan, the yen rate was to where, like, I think it was like 100 yen was like a dollar in the United States. I don't know what it is right now, but it's more, I think it's closer to like 1,000 yen to the dollar. All right. So it's, uh, it's, it's their, their money's not as valuable now. But I remember back then, like, it was just like, whoa, the, the economy is just, is just great. Everything's wonderful. And, uh, and so, wait, did I say that backwards? Anyway, whatever the case was, the economy was great, okay, back in those days. And now it's not. Now, maybe they're coming back, I'm not sure. But I know that they really suffered. And a lot of it was because what happens? Generation is idle. You know, they're prideful. They have it easy. And then the next thing you know, you know, they're just not, they're not caring about things. They're not working hard. They're not, and of course, you know, when you're talking about God's people, what happens? Well, now they're not, you know, you can think about a church, right? A church has everything easy, no trouble, no persecution. Everything's just, you know, they just got all the money and all that stuff that they need. Look, that's probably not the best place for a church to be in. Churches probably should have a little bit of persecution. They should have a little bit of struggle. They should, you know, time should get rough every once in a while because it keeps. That's why of those small percentage of Christians who are in Asia, they're some of the best Christians, best committed Christians in the world. As, I mean, you know, based on some of the stories that I've heard. But that makes sense because only 7% Christians, because it's illegal in a lot of these places in Asia to be a Christian. But those who are Christians, they've got the persecution, they've got the struggle and all that stuff. And I guarantee you, they're probably not sitting around playing the video games and all that stuff, but they're actually struggling and trying to do right, memorizing scripture and all that kind of stuff. Uh, as the stories go anyway. All right, so uh, any leader should recognize when his people are becoming idle and kind of spoiled, and they should try to do something about it. Whether there's the leader of a nation, the leader of their house, of a house, right? Or the leader of a church or whatever, they should recognize that, okay? So that's a bad influence. You know, in some ways it's great uh, uh, influence. You know, I love Nintendo. <laughs> I love Super Mario. I think some of the, I think some of the Japanese designs and the cartoons and some of that, I think it's great. I think, I think it's neat. But hey, when you start getting addicted to those kinds of things and you start losing focus, it, it becomes a really bad deal. Okay, I already mentioned anime. I'm not going to say much about anime right now because I'm going to preach about that Sunday. And I'm just going to mention this only so you know who I'm talking about on Sunday. I'll, I'll give a lot more detail on Sunday. But here's like the newest thing, a big influence when it comes to music. Now, I never in my wildest dreams thought that Asia, Asian music would influence the United States. Because when I was in Japan, the United States, you know, was the big music influence. Okay, when I was in Japan, Michael Jackson was like 
more famous in Japan than he was in the United States. Everybody loved Michael Jackson. Okay, I know it's sad, but that's that was the influence. Okay, so what happened was, remember I used that word uh, acculturation, right? So Asia started picking up on rock and roll and it started picking up on this new pop, you know, Michael Jackson, all that kind of stuff, the pop music of the 80s and the 90s. And now we get into the 200s and we've got this strange phenomenon I'm going to preach about on Sunday where now the Asian culture has taken what we contributed to them and they've kind of spiced it up a little bit. And now they are influencing the United States with their music. Now you say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know any. Well, there's this new phenomenon out there that's called K-pop. Anybody heard of that? stands for Korean pop, right? Korean pop music. And there's this ba- this one particular group. There's a bunch of them, but there's this one particular group that um, is called, uh, I, mean, I, don't, I guess that's, I guess their name is K-pop or, or whatever. But I think K-pop in, gen- in general talks about this big genre, this whole genre of Korean music, Korean pop. <clears throat> and if you look at them, I don't want to get too far into this because I, I got to save it for Sunday. Okay. If you look at them, you can't tell, is that a boy or a girl? Right. I can't tell. Like, oh, what are they? They're like just just like non, you know, they're 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 nothing. They're genderless. Right. That's that's the object. That's like the goal. Right. And they're singing this music and they're actually all guys, but they're just real sissy. And they're singing this. Uh, well, guess what? Guess where they got that influence from the United States. And now they're coming back here and we're like, oh, yeah, that's great. You guys are so cool and all this stuff. It's really weird. OK, but I'll talk about that on Sunday. All right. So. Uh, Here is, uh, well, let me just, let me just move on. Okay. So we're talking about entertainment. One thing I thought about, it's not, it's not a whole lot to mention, but, uh, literature and, uh, storytelling, you know, a lot of like, um, when you think about the middle East and you think about like magic carpets and, uh, and, uh, genies in a bottle and all that, all that kind of stuff, like, that's really influenced our society, really, because we, we tell a lot of stories about that and the Persian, uh, uh, you know, places and, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so entertainment is definitely there's been an Asian influence. Now, you might not just like look at different cultures, Asian cultures, and look at the United States and just right away recognize where it's been influenced. But it's there. There's a lot of influence uh, there. Are some of the most powerful Remember China. And Japan's on the list, too, as small as Japan is. Japan's on the list of powerful nations, okay? And so we're talking about some very powerful nations who are just kind of like influencing the world with uh, some some not-so-great things, okay? But I'm, I'm going to get back to that in a minute and tie that into Revelation, which we read, if, if, if I can remember to do that, all right? So entertainment, technology. Now, I, I, mentioned, I already talked about technology as it, as it relates to video games and stuff like that. Uh, but let me uh, say this. One positive about video games is that it got a lot of people into technology and computers. Uh, I would just, if I had to venture to guess, is that kind of, was that the start of some of your interest in computers back in the day? Because kids playing these video games and they're like, man, how does that work? How do you get into that? So they start learning technology, computer programming and all that kind of stuff. And really it has been influential in a culture that has has led to where we are today, where everybody in the world has a smartphone in their pocket, right? And uh, in the technology, because we just build off the knowledge that we learned from previous generations. And so Asia, Asia you know, Japan particularly, but Asian uh, culture has really influenced the United States in that way. And I think kind of like, like ha- we had to like spring into action, right? To compete with them. And so, uh, and then the, just the k- children growing up saying, Hey, I like playing video games. I like doing these things. And so they started looking at, you know, that as a career. Well, guess what? We're getting to a point now where if you don't know, uh, you know, technology, if you don't know about computers and stuff like that, like I'm, I'm curious what the jobs of the future are going to be without, with, without, without, people that are IT guys, right? Because you can't even go to Walmart anymore. And there's like maybe one, uh, you know, cashier 
in the whole store. Everything else is self-checkout, right? From what I understand, McDonald's, a lot of McDonald's are like that. You just go in and you just got to put in what you want and everything. Like you're not even going up and talking to people. You're just using computers, right? So we're getting to a point in our whole world. It's not just the United States. In fact, we're kind of slow to the game. You know, if you look at other parts of the world, they've already been like that for a while. But we're getting, I mean, there's places where, I mean, you go into the store and you just type in what you want and there's conveyor belts and stuff like that that bring you your items. And I mean, I mean, the world is getting very tech, technological, right? Even some of these cultures that you think, oh, the uh, United States is so advanced and these are like just these backwards cultures. They're more advanced than you think that they are, okay? And a lot of Asian countries are way ahead of us in technology. Okay, but what does that lead to? So look at the world today and you think about the advantages in the, in the, the artificial intelligence and, and how about this surveillance? Surveillance is scary, man. About, about four doors that I knocked on today had one of those little cameras, right? And while I was talking to the person, the light was on, which if I understand right, if the light's on, they're recording. Am I right? So like everything that I said to that person on their door, if I'm not mistaken, is recorded or at least somebody could be listening in the background or something, right? And I don't know about you, but it creeps me out when I really think about how you can't hardly do anything anymore without at least in the back of your mind saying, I could be being recorded right now. I could, somebody could be, somebody right now, I mean, I am being recorded right now. Somebody could have a cell phone in their pocket that's on record, right? I remember one time, Brother Dan, I'd been going soul winning with him and everything, and I didn't know this at the time, but you know, we had these conversations in the car of a soul winning with them and everything. And then all of a sudden at the end of the day, I found out everything that happened that entire day was on his phone. He has some kind of app or something where his phone is just constantly recording everything that happens. And I was like, I feel really violated. That's kind of like, I'm creeped out right now. Cause you've got every, everything we talked about, I thought was pr private and you've got, I'm not saying he went back and used it for anything. I'm just saying it was there, but I realized, you know what? You never know what, it's being recorded. You never know who's because that is where we are with technology right now. There's the, the surveillance is unreal. Okay. Fast forward 2021 or enter 2021. We've got the vaccines. We got the masks. We got all these uh, mandates and stuff like that. And I remember the, one of the first things that came out was, Hey, look what they're doing in China. And in China, they've got cameras everywhere. And all these cameras can recognize people's faces and see if they have a mask on or not. And, uh, and you know, now everybody's, you know, gonna, has, has got, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what kind of cards that they have or whatever, but my point is this, the surveillance and the, just the ability to just like uh, trace everything is, is, is huge because of technology. And a lot of that, like I said, we're way behind some of these other cultures. And if we get up to speed and we influence them and they influence us and we, and it blows up like, like the internet did and like technology and video games and all that kind of stuff, we're in a very dangerous situation. Okay. But as Christians, none of us should be surprised about that. We already know it's coming. We already know, like I didn't understand it. And back in the eighties when they had Walkmans and, and nobody had cell phones, yeah, that's how old I am. We, when I was young, we didn't have cell phones, right? Our phones were connected to the wall. <laughs> had these long cords. If you were lucky, you could walk around because you had a long cord. And, uh, and uh, back then, we had no idea how these things in the book of Revelation was going to play out. Now we read the book of Revelation, we're like, well, duh, everybody's got cell phones and they can see what's going on. And well, how could they enforce, you know, the mark of the beast and no one can buy, sell and trade? Go to Revelation 13. I read this article about China using facial recognition and all that. And it said this, when facial recognition is everywhere, anything you do is fair game for public shaming and punishment. And that's exactly what they're doing there, you know, because that's a communist country and they're using that facial recognition to like, like force people to do that. You got blackmail, you got, you know, all these kinds of things. And so it's a very dangerous situation and it comes in the name of, oh, well, we're trying to help people. We're trying to keep people safe. We're trying to do this. And they, they, that's the agenda that they push. Well, this is why facial recognition is so important. You know, 
I remember the first time the police officers started, you know, because of all these shootings and, and police were shooting these people and, and they were like, hey, we need to do something about this. So now they got it to where every car, every cop car is supposed to have a, a camera on it. And then they're saying, not only that, that's not good enough. Every police officer has to have a, a body cam. And it's like now everything is like being recorded and they're and they're hailing that as like, hey, this is good for the people. Now you're protected. And a lot of people are for that. They're like, hey, I don't like I don't trust the police. I want everything to be recorded. But I'm telling you, when everything is recorded, that might sound like a good idea for some situations. But in the long run, there's going to be lack of freedom. There's going to be blackmail. There's going to be all kinds of things uh, twisted. And I would suspect now I'm not saying every I'm, I'm surely not saying every police officer out there, you know, is innocent. There's a lot of bad stuff, a lot of corrupt officers and stuff like that. But I bet you sometimes that that body cam or whatever has gotten people have people have lost their jobs, which probably shouldn't have lost their jobs. But somehow that that footage was used and, and, and it was like, you know, they they kind of misinterpreted it and stuff like that. I'm just telling you all that all that tracing and uh, surveillance and all that stuff is dangerous okay but um you're in revelation 13 i quit turning look at chapter 13 verse 16 and it's talking about the antichrist he caused all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him hath understand him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So all people, poor, you know, rich, doesn't matter, bond free. Everybody's got to receive this mark, and they're going to have some way of survey, you know, keeping uh, track of you and, and and all that kind of stuff. Look, we're not surprised. We've known it's coming. We're just seeing it unfold with the technology. And I'm telling you, you know, the influence of some of the Asian culture, especially again China, and it's with them being communist. And then, uh, like, I'm not trying to get into politics or uh, conspiracy theories or whatever, but you know. It's like nothing's a, nothing is a theory. Nothing, uh, there are still theories, but like nothing like shocks me anymore. Just the weirdest like conspiracy theories out there nowadays. I'm like, you mm, might want to look into that. <laughs> but, uh, but like it's, the, it's just there's so much just going on so fast and you're seeing things kind of unfold. But um, I kind of got distracted there. But anyway, so we know uh, that these things are coming and we're looking at uh, just things unfold before us. And it's going to lead to Matthew 24. Jesus said it this way. Oh, I know what I'm saying with uh, uh, with our government right now and think about like the, you know, Democrats as far left, you know, in this idea. I mean, Bernie Sanders was socialist and he was really close to getting elected. Right. Uh, for at least a p period of time. That's what people thought. It's just flat out socialist. Like he didn't mind telling people he's socialist. People are like, yeah, that's what we need. And so the next step, I mean, socialism is here. Communism is here. And it's just like, you know, it's like, hey, we might as well just be China, communist China. And it's all coming like this one world uh, government. Like, hey, we're talking about Asia influencing the United States. But look, the whole world's going to be like one. You know, they're all, we're all going to, uh, it's just going to be one government some at some point. Matthew 24 Starting in verse 4. <clears throat> it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and uh, shall deceive many. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. So, man, we've never had uh, an outbreak like we have, like COVID. And we've never had a time where everything is shut down and all that stuff. Well, first of all, we have had a lot of stuff like that in the past. But second of all, like, are you surprised? Right. Jesus is talking about a time where all these 
diverse, you know, wars and there's going to be famines and earthquakes and pestilence, right? Which is talking about diseases and, and it's going to be, uh, these are things And he says, look, these are just the beginning of sorrows, but here's what's going to happen after that. They shall deliver you up to the, be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and uh, shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Like we read the rest of Matthew and we read Revelation and we know what he's talking about. Okay, it's, we're going to get to that time as Christians, you know, just trying to worship the Lord, trying to preach the gospel. And at some point, the Antichrist is going to like try to put a stop to that and try to kill Christians and all that kind of stuff. But look, Jesus is coming and he's going to take us out, right? <laughs> Before things get too bad. And then after that, God's going to pour out his wrath on everybody. So, uh, so we understand it. We know it. It's unfolding right before our eyes and, we, and we're not surprised by that. But as you watch what's going on in Asia, and I'm talking about Middle East and Far East, and you see all just the, the political unrest and wars and all that. And you see just the technology and you see what is happening right now with this uh, with COVID and and all these uh, measures being put into place. Uh, we we see it's, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? Like you kind of get like, man, I don't know how close it is, but it sure is a whole lot closer. And it seems like a, it's just being accelerated. It's just like speeding. It's like a critical mass almost. It's just like these events are going to unfold so fast. And so it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> I have little doubt that the relations that we have with them and then all this technology and all is going to lead up to a fulfillment of this end times prophecy. And, then, and, and I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know, most of it's speculation, but I believe it's going to take place in the Middle East. I mean, because we got the Antichrist is going to sit in the temple and he's going to proclaim that he is God. So something's going to go on in the Middle East, right? And the two witnesses are going to be in Jerusalem preaching and lying in the street and all that. So, you know, everything's going on in, in, in Israel. You know, I know that putting Israel, in, you know, putting Jews into Israel in 1948 was, was not a fulfillment of Scripture necessarily, but I think that it could be leading up to something that happens in the future that, that we wouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be that, that uh, shouldn't be that way, but it is. And so uh, something's going to happen in the Middle East and Asia and all that area there uh, that's going to lead up to what, uh, to what we read there in the Bible. Mystery Babylon in Revelation 17 talks about, for the sake of time, I'm just going to move on real quick from that, but it talks about, you know, the merchants and the buying and the selling. And can you imagine what would happen if all the sales between the United States and the trade and everything between the United States and China alone, not to mention all the rest of Asia, was put to a stop? What do you think would happen? Famine and wars, <laughs> you know? Maybe, maybe pestilence that were grown in a lab. I mean, uh, all these things, right, that we read about is, uh, is very likely. I'm not saying that any of these are like we are in the end times. And, you know, if you get the vaccine, you're taking the mark of the beast. Or I'm not saying all that stuff. I'm just saying you see how easily it's just going to lead, you know, to the next step. And so, uh, and so we should just keep a, a, weary, a, a weary eye. Weary eye? Leery eye. All right. Number three, real quickly, philosophy. The Asian culture has influenced our philosophy. Let me just give you, just for the sake of time, just give you three people. Gandhi, Confucius, and Lao Tzu. I'm going to start these quotes and you finish them, okay? These are quotes that are inspired by Asian people, all right? Number one. Okay, you guys know this about Gandhi, so this is an extra one, okay? I'm going to give you an extra one. Uh... What does it say? I think I wrote that wrong. Anyway, I know the quote. Hate the sin, love the sinner. Love the sinner. What? I thought that was in the Bible. No, that was Gandhi. <laughs> okay, that was Gandhi. That was a quote from Gandhi. All right, here's another one. Gandhi said, an eye for an eye ends up making the whole world blind. Making the whole world blind. That's a very popular quote. Yeah. Some of these are great. So I read some of these quotes from these guys, Lao Tzu and, uh, and Gandhi and Confucius. Some, some of the quotes are pretty good. But we've influenced the United States. And unfortunately, sometimes Christians 
have ad adopted those as their as like, hey, this is biblical. And it's like, wait a minute, that's that's not in the Bible. That's Gandhi said that. Confucius <laughs> Confucius said that. Here's another one. Uh, it is better to light a candle than to. Anybody remember this one? Curse the darkness, right? Better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. I thought everybody knew that. A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. That's Lao Tzu, okay? So really, and this is just a small sampling. So many of our like proverbs and stuff like that are were inspired by that. Uh, other thing, again, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll be preaching on some of this kung fu and stuff like that in uh, in Iola on Sunday night. So it's uh, you know, uh, you know, if you if you watch that or or listen to that after it's recorded or whatever you'll kind of get some of my views on that. But here's some huge uh, influences on the United States from the, from the Asian culture. Yoga, okay? And with yoga came yoga pants. I hate yoga pants, <laughs> all right? I have to preach on that on Sunday night, okay? Uh, yeah, I don't know what that has to do with Asian culture. That's kind of like I think one of those uh, United States adopted it and said, hey, we'll call these yoga pants. <laughs> but, uh, but yoga, this meditation, and this emptying your mind and this whole philosophy that led to new age movement in the United States. And it led to like, you know, all the hippies and all that just love. And the, you remember the Beatles, you know, like they came back from, from India and they, it really influenced their thought. And then, uh, in the nineties, there were like, uh, uh, alternate alternative rock groups that like, uh, you know, like t you incorporated all that nirvana and all this reincarnation and all these kinds of thinking into their songs. It's really affected our culture. And again, Christians, they might claim to be Christian, but that doesn't mean they're the culture in, in different philosophies hasn't warped their brain. We all know we knock on, you know, nine out of 10 doors where they claim to be Christian. They don't have a clue what the Bible says. Uh, they just claim to be Christian and they know Jesus Christ and they say, yeah, I believe in the Bible. But they really don't know what it says. And all their, all their mind is just these Eastern philosophies and stuff like that. It's been, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to doing some more study on that and, and preaching on that. But uh, martial arts, you know, is a huge thing in the United States. Uh, been influenced by Asia. Um, you know, and again, that with that comes a state of mind and a philosophy. Um, for the most part, the idea of the vegan diet, that's wicked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the ve vegan diet is very Asian uh, thing. Not, not everybody. They, Asia, they eat meat in Asia, but there are some like Buddhists or whatever that are, are very much into a uh, vegan diet. And so let's close with Romans 14 too. It says, for one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. We don't want to be weak, right? So <laughs> let's go to Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this world uh, that you've created, but Lord, how we've messed it up. Yet you're still in control and we understand that. And we look at your word and we trust you and we have faith in what you said would happen. So help us have faith in uh, what you told us to do and help us live like the Christians that you've told us to live like and, and not be uh, influenced by the philosophies of the world and at the same time, Lord, help us remember our Asian friends, neighbors, and uh, particularly those who have come to the United States. Uh, help us to realize, Lord, that the, uh, many of them are open uh, and they have a better opportunity to receive the gospel here, many of them, than they would ever have in, uh, in the countries that they came from. And so help us, Lord, just like all the cultures that we're talking about this month, help us to uh, get a little bit better understanding of the mindset and, uh, and the culture of some of these people groups and help us be burdened, Lord, that we might take the gospel to them and, and, uh, and just cross cultural bar barriers however you can so that we might do that job. We praise you, Lord, for all that you've done, and I pray that you just give us a, a good night, keep everyone safe as they go home, and uh, pray in Jesus' name. Amen.